Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of the Mill Georgia Spotlight. I'm your host, Jack Ellis. Thank you so much for joining us this week. This week, we have a very special guest. I'm taping this program from Kampala, the capital of Uganda in East Africa. And all of our guests are special, but this week we have an entire, especially uh, special guest, the Chief Executive Officer of the Uganda Tourism Board, Ms. Lily Adroba. And we like to thank her and welcome her to our program. Thank you so much for being here. It's my great pleasure. Thank you, Well, uh, you know, you're a busy person. I appreciate this opportunity. I'm going to try to get right to the point of what, why we are here. And just yesterday, I happened to have been in the mall, and I saw this on the back of a young lady's, and we'll show this later on a close up. But and I saw this on the back of a young lady's t shirt. I don't know whether this is one of your promotions. And it says, Ask me about Uganda. And I thought, what a good way to start the program. I want to ask you about Uganda. <laughs> Tell me about Uganda. <laughs> That's very interesting. Um, well, Uganda is the pearl of Africa. What makes it the part of Africa? What makes Uganda the pearl of Africa is Uganda has diversity. We have, we have diversity to the form that every unique things that you would find in Africa is almost a little bit of it is in Uganda. We have the wildlife. We have iconic wildlife species like the mountain gorillas with 54% of it in Uganda, the population of the remaining wild mountain gorillas in the world. There's only Uganda, Rwanda, Democratic Republic of Congo, the three countries that have mountain gorillas. And we have 54% of the remaining population. Worldwide? Yes. Only three countries? Yes. And you have 54% here in Uganda? Exactly. So, very diverse in terms of uh, the birds. We have 50% uh, of the bird species you would find in Africa in Uganda. And that represents 11% of the world's bird species you would find them in Uganda. And some of them are also endemic to Uganda. You wouldn't be able to get them anywhere else, but only in Uganda. Uh, we have the big five. We normally say we have the big five plus the two. Mm. Yeah, we know the big five. What the, what's the big five? The elephants, the lions, the leopards, the buffaloes, the rhino, sheras. And the plus the two, which you'll only get in Uganda, is the mountain gorillas and the chimpanzees. So we have the big five plus the two. Well, that's quite interesting. And uh, in addition to that, we also have a very diverse culture. Uganda has about 65 uh, different tribes. And that means different customs, different way of life. And this makes it a very rich country with culture, different way of doing things, the language, the food, the way we prepare our food, you'll find it in all kinds of tastes, depending on which part of the country you go to. That in itself is, 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 uh, is the diversity that we have. We have history to the country. The landscape of Uganda, so dramatic, from the savanna, semi-arid in north, um, northeastern Uganda, to snow Cape Mount Renzori, which is the third highest mountain in Africa, uh, to the freshwater lake Victoria, which is the largest freshwater lake in Africa, but the second to Lake Superior in the world. So there are all these, you can immerse yourself in nature, in culture. The food we have, you know, is, is, is the best from all I know. So that's a lot to see and a lot to do in Uganda. So if someone was traveling from North America, as a lot of people do, and I encourage them to do. For those of you who don't know, I represent Uganda as Honorary Council for the state of Georgia and two other states 
surrounding Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina. Uh, so how long would someone need to stay here to see all of this, all of this diversity, to move around the country? You would recommend, what, 10 days? Well, can you do it in seven days, 10 days? Uh, well, if, so, if someone is coming from America, that's a long way to come to East Africa, to Uganda specifically. And uh, with, um, with the travel time that it takes to get here, I would recommend a minimum of seven days. Because otherwise you're just rushing through everything and then you don't really get the real feel of what we have, the real experience. So that would be minimum, but the more the better. Yeah, because uh, it also depends on the interest of someone. But there's so much that in every region of the country that you go to, you'll be, ex you'll be able to get you know, history, culture, wildlife of different kinds. But if you want to have most of it, then you'll need more time to go to the different parts of the country. Yeah. I would say to our viewers, of course, in the middle of Georgia area, and, and of course we're seeing all over the world on YouTube and other media platforms, it's easy to get to you. A lot of people don't realize, of course, in Atlanta mm -hmm. is the busiest airport in the world, which happens to be Delta's mm -hmm. uh, home base, which they partner with KLM and Air France and other, and, and Kenya Airways. So it's easy to get to Uganda. I want the people to know that. It's not mm. difficult, even sure. though it takes about 18 Very hours true. you're in transit, but it's easy to get here. You have Absolutely. normally one airport in between, mm. either through Europe or through the Middle East. But now you have your own airline, Uganda Airlines. Uh, is it a feeder airline into any of the other big airlines or just mostly uh, serving the, uh, uh, the, the, the East African region? Well, we have uh, the region of flights, but we also have uh, the air buses that are going to be serving the international uh, destinations, the uh, markets. So we have London, we have Dubai, we have Guangzhou in China, um, uh, South Africa. Th these are the starting um, you know, uh, destinations for now, but we do hope that in future there will be more cities and destinations for Uganda Airlines to fly to. But also right now with the London flight, Dubai, they will be feeding into, um, I know that there is arrangements, probably the contract is already signed with Dubai, you know, Airlines, Emirates, um, you know, which service for Uganda, North America, yes. yes, for Uganda Airlines to be a feeder into Emirates flights. Well, that's great. Well, we know that this COVID has devastated tourism around the world, travel, air travel, hotels, and what have you. Uh, but in North America, especially in the U.S., probably even Canada, uh, the government has stepped in and provided some stimulus money. And I went around uh, the, and spoke to a lot of tour operators around mm. in, in Uganda and preparing for this interview. And I said, what would, I'm going to be talking to the chief executive <laughs> officer of the Uganda tour. What question would you like? And to, almost to a person, what are you going to do to help us survive? Because a lot of them are saying their business is off 80 to 90%. And they want to know, will the government at some point step in and provide any type of assistance? So that's the question that I well, yeah, th thank you. Um, there are a number of things that the government has already done, you know, since we started with the first wave of COVID-19 pandemic in Uganda, uh, which was last year, 2020, in March. And uh, there were taxes that were waived off. Uh, however, there is a discussion because we didn't know how long this pandemic is going to last. So the tax waiver for the accommodation facility, both within the metropolitan district of Kampala, uh, the city, and also, you know, the different, uh, the different parts of the country, the lodges, you know, in the national parks. So all the taxes were waived off until June 2021, because we didn't expect that 
will be having this pandemic uh, issue going on beyond this time. We thought we would be back in business. So we have retabled this back and uh, hopefully it will be considered yeah, because uh, we still have very low business um, and with the little that the the tourism operators are getting right now to tax them as well makes it very difficult for them to recover. So that's one thing. Um, two is uh, capacity building because we had people staying home for over a year and we think it's, uh, we believe it's very important for everyone to have refresher training, uh, to get back to work with new ideas, new ways, we have had trainings going on right from last year and it continues uh, in managing the, the standard operating procedures that have been set in place to keep everyone safe. The staff, you know, the visitors, the guests coming in have to be kept safe. So that required the training. It's a new way of doing things. A number of things are being digitized, you know, menus are no longer printed, you know, there are QR codes, you just, you know, mm. put your phone, scan the menu on your phone. It's new ways of things that we have been trying to help to get the, the tourism operators to adapt to. And uh, a lot of information sharing has been, we have been doing that online to try and educate them to understand what the new behaviors of the travelers are, what the new needs are in terms of uh, any traveler consi considering to come to Uganda would want to have before they can travel. But I have to say, Jack, we have done very well as a destination, as a country, in trying to manage the spread of the of COVID-19 virus. Uh, the government has been very quick in stepping in, lockdown, you know, different, you know, operating procedures that have been put in place. Um, yeah, it, it has been very difficult, but we have managed to a big yeah. extent to control. Otherwise, you yeah. know, it would have been worse than what yeah. we have. And uh, because of that as well, we, get, uh, we got accredited by World uh, Tourism and Travel Council with a safety stamp, which means, you know, uh, there's confidence in the systems that the protocols we have set up in managing the health and safety of everyone who, is, who gets to visit Uganda. And I agree with you. Mm. I was happened to spend six, seven months here last year from um, last August until March. And what you've been able to do here to keep, to keep, to uh, uh, minimize the spread yeah. of this virus has been nothing but a, a short of spectacular and exceptional. Of course, you'd had some very tough things to do. Mm -hmm. It's a very tough decision, closing the airport yeah. for six months. That yeah. was a very, the last time I came here, I had to come yeah. through Kenya and get on the road and, 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 you know, so, so I commend the, the leadership of Uganda, what they've done to keep the spread of this virus. But, but back to your job is to promote Uganda to get people to come here. So you're open for business now. In we, spite of what has happened, you are now open for business, airports, borders. We are open. Uh, we were shut down from March last year to the 1st of October last year we opened and we haven't been closed again since then. Even during the second lockdown that we had in June this year, we did not shut down the airport. We were operational. And we were, we were very careful during the lockdown when we had the increase, the spike, you know, the surge with the second wave, that we were operating our tourism in a bubble you know, manner that we had specific, you know, uh, procedure at the airport for the international tourists coming in with specific registered vehicles, specific staff, driver, tour guides, specific accommodation facilities. And we had the restriction only to the national parks 
um, so that we would manage everybody's safety. Um, and that worked fine until recently. Now everything is more or less open, but we have maintained the restriction that uh, we, have to, uh, we have to regulate everybody who is operating in the tourism sector, that they are following the SOPs, they, are, they have the right equipment, you know, the locations they are going to, we have to audit and uh, recommend that you know, uh, the tourists can actually visit them because we are, satisf we are satisfied with the quality uh, more especially the health safety. Great. We'll, we are speaking with Ms. Lily Adrova, who is the CEO of the Ugandan Tourism Board. We're going to take a short break, and we're going to show you about 90 seconds of some highlights of everything that's happened here in Uganda from a tourist standpoint, as well as some of the landscapes, some of the people. We'll be right back. by almost exactly two seconds. He's Joshua Cheptegei of Uganda. This is superb running. I've shared my story with the world, with you, but you've only seen the half of it. Because to truly know and appreciate my story, you will have to see it for yourself. My home, my Uganda. From the breathtaking waterfalls of the Nile to every beautiful sunrise and sunset. From the amazing blankets of green to the priceless treasures that lie within. Along the way, I have met some unusual friends. The world famous silverbacks. When I see them, I behold Uganda's treasures. So yes, you see me and celebrate Uganda. I assure you, there is a lot more in store. I have lived here for years, but even I am yet to see its full glory. Join me. Let's take on the pearl of Africa together. Welcome back to the Middle Georgia Spotlight. We're speaking with Ms. Uh, CEO of the Uganda Tourism Board, uh, Ms. Lily uh, Jarova. Uh, Ajarova. Ajarova. <laughs> I thought I had it right twice and I got it wrong. Ajarova. But anyway, uh, thank you again for being with us. You know, you mentioned earlier that Uganda is the Pearl of Africa. And that was given, that moniker, if you will, moniker was given to it by Sir Winston Churchill many years ago. So what did he see in Uganda at that time? And you know the source of the Nile is here, we know that, and all the animals, but what, you know, the Pearl of Africa, that's a very special gem. And, 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 and the Black Pearl is even more, is a very rare one. You, you don't mm -hmm. find it that often. So Uganda is that unique, that rare. What did he see then, and how is that, how is that continued to to, to live up to its name as being the Pearl of Africa? Well, um, it is the, the natural heritage we have, the natural resources in terms of the forests, the lakes, the waters, the mountains, you know, uh, name it. And uh, the diversity of the wildlife, you know, that he experienced. And he describes, uh, he describes it also in terms of the colors, yeah? The colors that this country has, you know, to the smell. You know, there's the natural smell. Uh, I've been told by, you know, tourists who have come from Europe, every time it rained and there's that smell of the soil and they're like, it's so unique and so different. So. I believe it is a combination of all that that he experienced, you know, mm. just with the, with the natural heritage, and then the people as well, because he traveled through the country and he met different tribes, different groups of people along the journey. And 
as I already said, the diversity of the culture, our ways of life according to the different tribes, mm. you know, in itself, you know, is, you get yeah. immersed in it, you know, the food. So in yeah. other words, that, that, that's not just a, a throwaway line. It is truly the pearl It, it of still Africa. is. Yeah. It and, still and is. We haven't lost the natural resources. We have lost some, and we are fighting to make sure we yeah. don't lose more, but we still have most of it. Yeah. And I want to talk to you about conservation, yeah. because when I first met you, I guess 10 years ago maybe, mm -hmm. you, were, you took me to an island where you all had taking care of often uh, chimpanzees or the ones who've been yeah. injured and you were nursing them back. Yeah. So is that a conservation and, and making sure these animals are treated properly, keeping poachers away, is that a big part of it? Well? Absolutely, absolutely. And to, to say as well, uh, it's a fact that we have 11% of the land mass of Uganda under conservation, protected and gazetted as national parks, wildlife reserves. We have 10 national parks. We have 10 wildlife reserves. We have five community uh, sanctuaries. Uh, besides the private, you know, sanctuaries and conservation areas, but these are gazetted, you know, by parliament. And so 11% of the land mass is under conservation. Uh, it's more or less more but officially from the government gazettement, that's what we have. And that shows you the importance that the government of Uganda and the people of Uganda attach to conservation of nature. Um, and the, we also, Uganda has some of these iconic species, the chimpanzees. We used to have millions of them in, in the last few decades. We have done a lot of destruction uh, to nature. That in, you, in Uganda, we have about 5,000 of the chimpanzees in terms of population spread in 12 different forest blocks in Uganda. And, um, and that is a part of less than 200,000 left of the millions we had. Mm. In, in about 50 years, we have lost that much. And the projection is that in another uh, 10 to 15 years, we might have nothing left if nothing seriously is done now. And so the project that I was running with the chimpanzees then, uh, with the sanctuary on Ngamba Island Chimpanzee Sanctuary, which is an island on Lake Victoria, it was a conservation um, project that was helping to create awareness, educate the public about the, the importance of conservation and using the sanctuary as a means of getting people to physically see the importance uh, of how the small forest on the island was providing the real habitats that the, the chimpanzees needed. And again, you know, working with the Wildlife Authority to do law enforcement because we have the laws, uh, do the, the law enforcement to make sure that the poachers are brought to books. And uh, we also do appreciate that uh, some of the situations are out of uh, uh, desperation, that people need the food and uh, providing alternative livelihood to poaching has been part of the big program that the Wildlife Authority is implementing. And uh, it was the same project that we were, uh, were undertaking with the Chimpanzee Trust. Yeah. Well, because you did such a good job there, I'm sure and you were elevated to this position in 2019, I understand, 2019, 2019 as the chief executive of the tourism uh, operation here in, in Uganda. What's your vision, uh, five years down the road, uh, three, what's your overall vision? What, what, do you, what do you want to do better than you're doing now? Obviously, you want to get more people mm -hmm. to come and support uh, the various uh, uh, tourism. But what is there one thing that you really want to get done that you haven't been able to get done? 
Um, it's, it's basically to get tourism to be appreciated for the various values that it offers. Employment, the foreign exchange earning. Um, we are contributing to the GDP up to 7.7%. That's the contribution of tourism. In 2019, before the pandemic, uh, tourism was bringing up to 1.6 billion US dollars into the economy and uh, we were employing directly up to direct employment into the tourism sector was up to close to 700,000 Ugandans. To COVID. Prior to COVID. Prior to COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a huge contribution to the economy. And um, based on the resource that we have, as we already talked about, the natural endowment, to the cultural, the people of Uganda are known to be so friendly, um, very hospitable. And uh, those are real big assets that we haven't yet made the best use of in mm. packaging them to the quality that the international travelers, not only international, even the Ugandans themselves, um, we still need to get most of them to travel to know their country better. And then we have within the region, you know, I mean, there's so much that we have to offer. So if I have to bring it down to one thing, it is getting tourism to be appreciated as a very important uh, sector, as a very important um, activity that not only for economic reason, but also for the environmental. Because uh, according to our policy, um, the tourism practice in Uganda is environmentally, supposed to be environmentally friendly, where we are taking care of the local people. It should contribute to the livelihood of the local people. It should protect the environment. It should be able to benefit you know, the different people along the value chain. Yeah. You know, uh, of course, I'm sure you get a lot of European visitors here, but we're in North America. And a lot of North Americans come here as well. And, um, and when I promote, my, one of my jobs as the honorary mm. council is to promote Uganda, people coming here, investments, and so forth. And what people always want to know is, is the country safe? You know, because if you go to the website sometime, you say, mm -hmm. well, Uganda is not that. And I know it's a safe country. Mm -hmm. Is it safe? Well, what would you say to uh, someone sitting in Atlanta, Georgia, or Macon, Georgia, or any place in North America, and I want to go to Uganda, what would you say to them about the safety of this country? Well, Uganda has been very safe for the last over three decades. And uh, very safe, you can move to any part of the country without any problem at all. Um, what else would I say about safety? I mean, it's such a free country. It's such a free country. Um, prior to pre-COVID, you know, um, I mean, there were shops that were open 24 hours in the city. Yeah, you find people moving throughout the night. Uh, and to me, that is part of sign of, 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 of the country being, you know, very safe. Otherwise, you know, you wouldn't have people moving freely. Um, I can't emphasize enough, but Uganda has been very safe and it is still very safe. And uh, um, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are very welcoming people as Ugandans. So. We, we, we encourage as many as possible from all over the world, especially from North America, <laughs> to visit Uganda. Um, because I believe that there's so much, that, so much value that you would find in Uganda in terms of the experience that we would offer. Well, I agree and I promote Uganda as much as I possibly can. But I run into things, uh, I guess, from my age or older, when I talk about Uganda, 
you know, some people still say, oh, he did me, you know, there's still more to come. I'm sure you probably encounter that as you travel as well. But we just have to work to keep the spell. And that was so many, so many years ago. Yeah. Uganda today is definitely not the Uganda of old, I can assure you of that. I've been coming here for the last 20, 20 plus years, and I've seen the changes, the positive changes that are taking place. No. No, but since I'd yeah. be sorry, Jack, yeah, uh, no. something else to say about the security, maybe related to security as well, is that um, um, until maybe a decade ago, you know, our road network was not very good. And in the last decade, there's a lot of development that has happened for anybody who was here maybe 20 years ago and never came back you know, in between, and they come back now, they will be able to see the huge difference. It is drastic, oh. yeah, but we have road network, you know, uh, we are well connected now with uh, paved road, and I think that contributes to the safety as well. Um, so I, I thought it's important because the one thing that the government of Uganda has decided to prioritize is infrastructure, yeah, which is important even for when we are talking about investment in tourism, you know, for somebody to come from North America to invest here, they would want to, you know, to see what infrastructure is there, electricity, is there running water, is the road accessibility possible to where I want to put my investment. So um, I think we have done very well and uh, there's, there's, there's a huge opportunity for investment, not only in tourism, we need a lot of investment in tourism, from accommodation, we still lack, you know, uh, accommodation, we need a lot more accommodation to be built in this country. So there are investment possibilities as well. Yes. So people come and invest lot. in the tourism industry. In, not only in tourism, but also in other you know, areas. Um, and to mention as well, in sports, Uganda has talented you know, people. I you mean, we great. won. You we did won. great in the Olympics. Congratulations. <laughs> well, I was going to say that. We did amazingly yeah. well. Yeah. But, you know, these young people are, you know, are finding their talents and doing all this really in a very hard way. We need facilities, sports facility. That's an area of investment. Well, With the population that we have, yeah, there's a lot of need for. Um, for medical services. We need, you know, people who are able to invest to come and invest even in medical services. Right now, just vaccine would be okay. We get some vaccine. <laughs> well, look, I, you know, uh, there's so much more I would like to talk to you about, but obviously, with the constraint of time and your schedule, we are fresh out of time. But I will say this to you if you're a whitewater rafter, make sure that you are a whitewater raft. If you want to go whitewater rafting on the Nile, I did that and I thought I understood whitewater rafting. There's nothing like whitewater rafting on the River Nile, the white Nile that starts here in Uganda. Uh, but I want to thank you very much for your time. I wish you all the success and continue to promote Uganda and get people to come here and invest in it and so forth. And we've been speaking with the CEO of the, uh, of the uh, the Uganda, I want to say Atlanta, the, the Uganda Tourism Board, Miss Lily Ajarova. Did I get it right? Ajarova. Ajarova. I got it right. <laughs> and we want to thank you all so much for being with us this week.